You know, probably the biggest part of wanting a 3D printer has always been to make things that I can use. I mean, yeah, you know, dragons and lightsabers are cool and necessary, right? But my greatest sense of accomplishment uh, it's always been making those things that I really need. So today I thought I'd walk you through a couple of projects I've done that have really made my journey in 3D printing feel worthwhile. Especially when my family's as much amazed by the results as I am. That was amazing! By the way, while I'm not an expert in Fusion 360 by any means, I did use the free version for two of the projects. And they're fairly simple, so the idea should translate easily enough to Tinkercad and other type programs. First up, since we've moved into this house over eight years ago now, I've always wanted to put can lights up in my ceiling. A simple fan light just never cut it. Well, I finally got what I wanted and I started the anxiety riddled process of cutting holes in my ceiling. And since I'm not an expert, let's just say that mistakes were made. Enough so that I knew I couldn't just leave things the way they were. I kept thinking about those frisbees that have the big hole in the middle, you know, how they taper down at the edges. and. That's what I decided to make for myself. In Fusion 360, the first thing we need to do is create a new sketch on the bottom plane. From the middle of the plane, let's create the inside circle at 160 millimeters. You can drag it out and kind of guess at it and get it there, or just type in 160 in the box and hit enter. Again, from the middle, we need to create the outside circle at 240 millimeters. And once you've made both of those circles, you can click on Finish Sketch. Next, we need to select the area of our sketch in between the inner and outer circles. Then extrude by clicking the E key and going up three millimeters. It's easy once again to just enter the three into the box and hit enter. Now select just the top outside edge only. We're going to make this edge go down and in using the chamfer command. If you don't know this tool, it's always easy to search using the S key and type it in, or you can use the drop down menu under modify. Set your chamfer to three millimeters and hit enter. Then select that new ring at the top of the chamfer you just made. We want this to be a nice, easy curve, not sharp, you know, like a Frisbee. So we'll use the fillet command, again using either search or the drop down menu, or with this particular function, you can press the F key. We'll set this fillet to five millimeters and hit enter. And that's it. Yeah, I've done it a few times, but you know, it's probably one of the easiest, quickest, and most satisfying projects I've ever done. And if I do say so myself, um, they turned out looking awesome. And if you decide to print this, since they're just decorative, a low infill works great, makes them print out a lot quicker. Unless, of course, you plan to use them for some other purpose, you know. Well, at my church, we have these light remotes to control the main lights in the sanctuary, and that's cool and all, but seems like every time I walk in, I'm basically blind trying to find the remote on the wall of the sound booth. So I did a quick search and I found this remote control wall holder. Everything looked pretty close to the right size, so I printed it out. Too small. If I wanted to be able to remove the remote from the wall holder, I'm gonna have to up that size some. Well, I took some quick measurements and increased the size by three millimeters, but I only needed the depth of the remote pocket, the inside there to increase, not everything. So thought I'd give this a try in the slicer. I did this in Bamboo Studio, but it should be easy enough to do in just about any slicer available today. After dropping the STL on the build plate, I first needed to flip it onto its back. Just select the part, click on the Lay on Face tool, or press F, and select the side to lay flat on the build plate. In this case, that's the back. Next, we're going to want to make some cuts using the Cut tool, or you can press the letter C. We need to raise the cut line so it's not on a curve of the model. And in the options for the cut tool, select cut to parts so they all stay together. Then you can click perform cut. And now we need to select the cut tool again, but this time we're gonna raise that cut line as high as possible without touching the top of the part. Cut to parts should still be selected and then perform the cut. We need to make some space to expand the middle section. So on the left next to process section, you're gonna click on objects and then you'll need to find and select just the top section. 
click on the Move tool or the letter M and raise the top section, the Z plane, by the amount you're increasing the size. In this case, it's three millimeters. After that, again under Objects, find and select just the middle section that we cut out previously. Selecting the Move tool again, we need to raise the middle section by half the height we need. Since we need three millimeters, we're going to raise it up by 1.5 millimeters. The resize tool that we're going to use next, that's going to expand up and down, so that's why this is necessary. With the middle section still selected, we can choose the Scale tool or press S. Make sure you uncheck Uniform Scale so we can just move the Z height, not the X and Y. Now we're going to increase the Z height by our needed size, which is three millimeters. You should see the middle section spread out to touch the top and bottom sections in both directions. And one last thing, due to the overhangs to print this properly, we're going to need to use that lay on face tool again to make it stand up on its bottom. And that's it. Now you know how to make a quick sizing change to an STL to get exactly what you need. Now this isn't going to work on every model, but it's a good skill to have in your learning toolbox. Another bonus to this is if you want to get fancy, you can recolor each section. Well, a little while ago, I ran across this toothbrush holder and I showed it to my wife and she just loved it. And so did my daughter. <laughs> well, my daughter had no problems with the way it looked then and took my first print to college with her. But my wife didn't really like that one big area. She asked if I could make two small openings on either side for toothbrushes. Why not? I quickly imported only the top STL into Fusion 360 and I used the insert mesh command and that's under the insert menu. Next under the mesh tab and then under the modify tab I clicked convert mesh to make it usable. Next I needed to add another crossbar. I decided the quickest thing to do would be to just copy the existing one but that means I'm going to need to separate it from everything else. Now one quick note for you, I know there's probably a lot of different ways to do this, but this worked for me, it was quick and it was easy. If you have another idea, leave them in the comments so we can all know. Now clicking back on the solid tab, select modify, then split body and click on the model to select it. On the menu that pops up on the right, you're gonna to wanna to change to the splitting tool by clicking select next to it. Also, make sure the option extend splitting tools is checked. Now, we need to select a flat portion near where the crossbar is connected. Once you do that, a large red indicator should appear to show what's being split. And then we're gonna select another flat portion on the opposite side of the crossbar. Another red indicator should appear there as well. Now you'll notice that the model is being cut all along the sides and everything. Don't worry about this, we're going to fix that next. When you've done all of that, click OK. Now on your left, under the Bodies menu, you should see four additional bodies showing up. Click on each one of those until you find that crossbar. It should highlight in the middle. It's always a good idea to label things like this for future reference. Well then we're going to select the remaining bodies but not the crossbar and we're going to do that by holding control and click on them one at a time. Now go up to the modify drop down and click on combine. When the right properties menu pops up, the operation option, it should be set to join. New component and keep tools should not be checked. Now click on OK. Under bodies you're now going to see two things, the crossbar and this new body you just made by combining everything else. And finally, let's make a copy of that crossbar. You can do this a couple of ways. You can right click and copy the crossbar over there on the bodies on the left or you can click on it and use control C. Then just paste that crossbar onto the top menu area where it says bodies. You'll immediately get controls to move that pasted crossbar, which you can't see because it's overlaying the original one. Move it into position as you like. You can always adjust it again later and hit OK when you're ready. Now if you want to make sure everything is equal and lined up, you can use the inspect function to measure it out. Under the inspect drop down, select measure or I always use the I key. Click once on the main parts farthest side away from the original crossbar and then you're going to click again on that first crossbar in the middle along the same line. Get your measurement and then you can press the escape key or click any open area to clear that. Now we're going to measure the same thing on the opposite side with your new crossbar. Once you get that measurement, you can close the measuring tool. 
If your new crossbar is off, you can just subtract the difference between the two and use M or move to move it into place. Well, once you're done with that, you can now save your changes and export as an STL. If you ever want to make changes, your two crossbars are still separated in Fusion. Or you can save it as a 3MF file and make some changes later in your slicer. And that's it. A single toothbrush holder is now holding two. Well, there you go. Three quick projects to make or remake some great functional prints. And that doesn't mean you can't use these skills on your fun prints. If there's anything else you'd like more info about or have me work on, let me know in the comments. And keep having fun in 3D printing as we all learn, create, and amaze.